letter word. Don't forget the man you elected to government. It begins with an R. Hmm. Try remember. Fits. Good. Compton here, come in. The Baron just passed. He's alone. Over. We'll take it from here. You go on home. Over and out. Right, he's on his way. Let's right. move. Todd, I can't keep my eyes open. We've got an hour's drive ahead of us. Why don't you try to catch some sleep? I'll do that. Wait me when we get near. All right. Rug over you and keep out of sight. Out. And if I don't? I'll pull you out of their debt if I have to. You just want your argument. You have a letter in your pocket stating the time and place for a meeting. I want it. What letter? Don't make it tough on yourself. The letter. What do you want me to do? Pull it out with my teeth? Car. If he gives you any trouble, kill him. Right, you go in your car, I'll follow.
I don't want to murder Rap, but if he gives you any trouble, don't hesitate. And I better get that blanket off him before he suffocates to death. Train coming. Right, out! Sit up. Help the towel. my legs a little bit. Give me a hand. If you can't get up on your own, better stay on the floor. use money. Why don't we make a deal? You'll never give up, do you? The man I work for pays plenty. Well, for a couple of thousand, you could buy a lot of chocolate bars. supposed to me, it's more important than we thought. Can we make it in time? No. I hope the guy isn't punctual. You think they're meaning to kill him? I wouldn't put it past him. The guy's a pro. Drive straight on and park somewhere out of sight. Stay in the truck unless you hear from me, okay? You think he's arrived yet? I don't know. We're a little early. Not to worry, I'm in no hurry. Okay, on your way.
John Mannering? Yeah. Get in. You uh, didn't sign your letter. Do you mind telling me who you are? Well, that's not very important, is it? Uh, I hope you don't mind. But have you got some means of identification? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm, I'm sorry mm. if I appear overcautious, mm. but I can't be too careful. Oh. Before I left France, someone tried to kidnap me. Kidnap you? Yes, it seems that they know I've got some very valuable information. And they want it very badly. But I've been told that you're an honest man, Mr. Mannering, and that you'll give me a square deal. Well, I'll do what I can. Uh, tell me, what made you pick this place for a meeting? When I knew it, it was just a disused factory. I used to play here when I was a kid. I was surprised when I got here tonight. They're building everywhere these days. A uh, cigarette? No. No. My chest's delicate. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, then, uh... What's this all about? Well... It's a, a long story. It's complicated. If, if it wouldn't bore you, it would be easier for me to begin at the beginning. Oh, I've got all the time in the world. Can't be far now. We should be there. From now on, we're late. I've worked in France for years. I was a, a male nurse in a hospital at Nice. Then I met this Englishman and I went to work for him. And I was with him till he died, just a, a few months ago. Go on. He was good to me. And he swore that when he passed on, he'd leave me something of great value. Did he say what? Yes. The Corelli sword. You know of it. Oh, well, what um, antique dealer doesn't? It was stolen 30 years ago from the Corelli collection and never recovered. That's perfectly true. My patient was the man who stole it. And it's in France? No. It's here in England, where he hid it shortly after the robbery. He never dared go back for it. Anyway, he didn't need the money. He was wealthy. And later, well, he was too sick to make the journey. But you know where the sword is? Yes. Its whereabouts are my inheritance. And, uh, do you want to sell this information? Yes. Well, I think we can do a deal, Mr. White. What's the matter? How did you know? My name was White. I never signed the letter. Now, that was careless of me. How did you know? Well, you see, I've known about you for a long time, in fact. It was I who tried to kidnap you last month, and I watched every move you've made. So, why don't you just tell me everything you know? Everything. Or what's left of your life could become very painful. No. 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 Find a phone and call the police. Okay. I don't enjoy hurting people. So why don't you just tell me what I want to know and you can get out and walk away from me? I can't tell you. This is the only chance I'll ever have of making any money. It's all I've got. But I'm not buying. I'm taking now. Let's start again from the beginning. Where is it? 
Please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me anymore. Where is it? Who are you? I'm the guy you were supposed to meet. The Baron? That's right. I was hijacked on the way here. You gotta help me. Why don't you tell me what this is all about? Well, well, let's get out of here first. Just relax. The police should be on the way now. Now, why did you send me that note? Well, I've got certain information. Are they coming? Not yet. What are we going to do? We're all right here for a while. It's too much open ground. If he's got a gun, he'll pick us up before we get close to him. There's got to be a way. An idea. Can you see them? No, but they're still out there. The police, why don't they come? They'll be here.
I can't move. We'll get an amulet. No. It's too late. You have it. What's that? My pocket. Help me. It's important. Help me. Is this what you wanted? Yes. It's important. Help. Help. Nothing in here. Nothing at all. I've checked almost all the items. You said he told you it was important. Well, I don't see how it could be. A couple of blurbs in there about yesterday's auction. They don't set off any bell. You take a look. Whatever it is, it's big. All this has got to add up to something. Got any ideas? Not many. All I know for sure is the man I was supposed to meet had some information. Some other people knew it, too. Who those people are and what the information is, that we don't know. Maybe the police can identify one of them. Well, I certainly hope so. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Mannering. I had your statement typed out. Perhaps you'd like to glance at it. Yes, thank you. Did you make any identifications yet? Well, we've made a start. Uh, the man who was shot. His name's Alan Yates. He has a record, small time. But he's been clean for the last two or three years. You know where he was working? Well, he's been unemployed for some time. His last job was as a warehouseman at Arkin Morley's. Arkin Morley? Yes, of course you'd know him, wouldn't you, being the same line of business? <laughs> yeah, I know him. Morley's about the largest antique dealer in Europe, isn't he? Yes, and about the crookedest. He's running my racket. It's probably quite slanderous. We certainly don't have anything on him, but um, this is off the record. We, we do keep a wary eye on him. Well, you'll have to do more than that to nail Arkin. Nevertheless, in the eyes of the law, an honest man. Well, I wouldn't trust him with coffee money. Well, naturally, we'll investigate, see if there's any connection between Morley and the dead man. Does the statement cover everything, Mr. Mannering? Yes, that's about it. If you'd like to sign it, I won't yes. detain you any longer. I'll inform you of any progress we make. Yes, I'll inform you, too. I'm planning to make a little progress myself. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been quite a night. I'm beat. First thing tomorrow, I'm going to talk to Ark and Morley. This whole thing has his trademark on it. Just as long as we don't do anything more tonight. You want a cigarette? Not now. He wasn't very good at crosswords. Hmm? At least he hasn't got the same solutions as me. This is... These aren't words at all. This is it. Here and here. See? Let me see that. The Crusader, Parkston House, Sussex. Well, it certainly proves something. What? We may not know what it is, but at least we know where it is. Yeah. Maybe Ark and Morley can fill us in on that. Darling, it just sort of slipped. Yes, it's all right, Ducky. It's quite all right. Do you want me to try it again? No, I don't think so. I think we'll shoot it again after lunch. Off you go, my lovely. All right, boys. Lunch now. Now, where is Arkin Morley? Here. Arkin. 
Do you think you could fix this for me during the lunch break? Well, it is irreplaceable, you know. However, I'll work my fingers to the bone. That's exactly what I want. Uh, Mr. Morley, yeah? main gate just rang, so there's a Mr. Mannering asking to see you. Mannering. Yes, yes, I'll see him here. Tell my assistant to join me, will you? Is Morley an actor too? What an actor. No, he's giving technical advice on a film featuring antiques. He may be a crook, but he knows his business. Uh, you better wait here. I won't be long. My dear John, how delightful. Hello, Arkin. Why, such a long time since we met. It was when I outbid you for the Matisse, wasn't it? No, I believe it was when I outbid you for the Pissarro. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, now you're here, perhaps you'd care to look around. I don't suppose you get much chance to see this end of the trade, do you? No, I always refer them to you. Oh, what did you want to see me about, John? You ought to know. I am superbly accomplished in many things, but I am not a mind reader. Shall we sit down and get to the point? Care for a cigarette, John? No, thank you. Well, John, what's it all about? I ran into some weirdos last night. Stocking masks and a whole bit. They gave me a pretty good going over. Well, you do seem to associate with the most unattractive people. But not by choice. Are you suggesting I have something to do with this? Oh, don't be sensitive, Arkin. I didn't say that. Well, I say what you mean. The object of this hijacking was to keep me from getting a certain address. But it didn't work. The man I was supposed to meet was killed. But not before he managed to tell me everything. So that makes this address worth a great deal of money. Are you interested? Well, it's uh, possible. If the price was right. Well, are you buying? I won't beat about the bush, John. Half of whatever the sword fetches. How much would that be? Oh, come on, come on. When you are a dealer, you know perfectly well. Thirty years ago, the Corelli sword fetched a quarter of a million dollars. Since when, it must have at least nearly doubled in value. Thank you, Arkin. What for? For telling me what this is all about. Until now, I had
Where are we going? Fetch the Corelli sword. Where else? You mean Mannering gave you the address? <laughs> he didn't exactly give it to me. What to say? Well, turn around, we're going back. What did you find out? The Parkstone house has been empty for seven years. It's up for rent. Got permission to view? We can spend as long as we like. But the Crowley sword's been hidden there for 30 years. We'll need all the time we can get. Well, maybe not. You got a lead. Crusader. throwing apart. I'm not surprised they're having trouble renting this place. What are you looking for? No oh, history of the house, family records or something. Where was it supposed to be stolen from? From here. Here? Uh-huh. It's pretty unlikely a thief would have left it here. I imagine that's what people thought at the time. I understand the insurance company's offered a fantastic reward for it. I hope it holds. Be nice to make a profit on this trip. Yeah, well, that's only incidental. Corelli's sword shouldn't be stashed away somewhere. Hey, John. Take a look at this. Lord Simon de Bourville, the fourth Earl. An impressive looking gent. Yes, he's the man who brought the sword home from the Holy War. A crusader. There's supposed to be something special about this. Well, if there is, it doesn't jump out and hit you in the eye, does it? No, it doesn't. Well, it looks like it'll be a long, hard search. Look, why don't you go down to the village and get us some coffee and sandwiches? That way we can keep at it. All right. Anything particular? No. Anything at all. You. Did you get lost? I'm afraid I'm responsible for the delay. You'll come down and join us, John. Oh, no heroics. I may not be the greatest marksman in the world, but at this range, even I couldn't miss this young lady. Close the door. John, I'm sorry. We saw the car in the village. Never mind. Well, Arkin, your perseverance plus. How did you find your way here? Well, your note didn't exactly help. I do wish I could boast that it was a remarkable case of intuitive calculation on my part. However, the facts are childishly simple. I followed you. We lost you back. Shut there. up. Look, why are we hanging about in the hallway? Why don't we go inside? Hmm? And you look around for somewhere good and safe where we can lock them up. I told them about the crusader, John. I'm sorry. You really mustn't blame her too much. Compton can be very persuasive. Besides which, I've been searching for the Corelli sword for many, many years. I've invested a fortune into tracking it down. I imagine so. Well, Larkin, what now? I really haven't thought very much about it. I imagine we'll have to kill you both. Oh, really? Mind you, we can, we can think about that after we've found the sword. Mm. Ah. And here's the man responsible for it all. 
He could have had no conception of the death he was to cause, merely by returning from the wars with a trophy of his victories. It's fascinating, really, isn't it? How's your Latin? My Latin? I speak it and read it with a fluency which can only come from a very superior English education. Why? Well, there's an inscription behind that. It uh, might mean something. Really? Don't move. That is going to cost you. You, 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 can't, you can't imagine how much that is going to cost you. Do you find anywhere? Yes, there's a room downstairs. No windows and good heavy doors. It's like a chapel or crypt or something. A crypt? How oh, very apt. All right, let's get them down. I think you'll be comfortable. Compton, what were you doing? Oh, some panelling up there. It sounded hollow. I have to take the whole house to pieces. We'll be here for months. Well, what other way is there? The Crusader is the only clue we have. I mean, there must be something about him somewhere. Well, come on, come on. Help me go through these documents. Checking out in the morning. Well, it's our old friend, the Crusader. Arkin has no future in the Club Pindaka business. Great. But how do we get out of here? You don't. Give me the sword. Quickly.
Like you said, Arkin, you're not the best shot in the world. Why don't you come out in the open? I can afford to wait. The way I figure it, you've only got two shots left. Well, one will be enough. So now you've got one. It's you I want, Ark. I'm taking you in. Be nearly time. Mm, soon now. Well, I wish they'd hurry it up. I don't like prisons, not even the outside of them. Relax, Lucas. We've been just waiting for a few minutes. He's been waiting for seven years. It's all right, Anne. It's all right now. Come on, let's get away from here. Just a minute. Let me get used to the feeling of being outside these walls. He's an old man. I wouldn't know. It's hard to believe a guy like that could have pulled off one of the biggest art thefts in the country. They've really broken him. He's just not the same man. You've got the airline tickets? Yes, we'll be in Paris by noon. Yes, Paris. Then we collect our money. How long would that take? Well, that depends on the Baron. Mm. Two, three weeks at the outside. Pow! <laughs> I could have taken him right then. One shot. Put it away. You'll get your chance soon enough. Do you want me to follow them? No hurry. We know what flight the girl's got reservations for. We can pick them up again at the airport. 
The only time I want to be real close to Selden is when he goes to collect his nest egg. Some nest egg? Half a million bucks worth of loot? Not loot, Lucas. You don't call an art treasure loot. Selden's gone through so much to keep it. Hmm. Seems almost a pity to have to take it away from him. Delia, I know golf clubs where they'd lynch you for pulling a gag like that. Trouble with golfers, they have no sense of humor. Carry on. I'll just sit here and watch you. How'd you know I was here? They told me at the shop. Have you decided yet? About me. Coming to work for you, I mean. I'm concentrating. Be such a marvelous cover for me. Whenever intelligence send me off on a job, I'd pose your assistant. I can go anywhere in the world, supposedly buying antiques. That sounds like the department's idea, Templeton Green. Here's mine. You must admit it's a perfect cover for a spy. There's only one drawback. You don't know anything about antiques. What is there to know? Antiques are just old things. Anyway, you can teach me. I'll read a few books. In a fortnight, I'll know as much as you. I think that's all for today. Oh, that's for you. It's marked urgent. Oh. They told me to bring it round from the shop. The mask of Alsatek. It's been a long, long time. What is it? This is part of one of the finest Aztec art collections in the world. Gold? Yes, but its intrinsic value really isn't important. This is probably the finest example of this kind of work in existence. Who's the man? Well, that's Mark Selden. He's the guy who stole the collection. Why did he send it to you? He wants money. There's a hefty insurance reward out for what he's got. He wants me to meet him tonight in Paris. Tonight? Yes, and I've got a lot to do if I'm going to make it. Look, while I'm with the insurance company, I want you to fix up reservations for a flight to Paris. Fix me up at the Georges Saint Hotel, and then pick up my grip from the shop. Now, just wait a minute. Oh, I forgot to tell you. You're hired. I am? Yes, sir. <laughs> Charlie, you're the only insurance executive I know who wears lipstick. And you're the only client who gets away with calling me Charlie. I like Charlotte much better. I'll try and remember that. Look, I've got a plane to make, so we'll have to talk fast. It's about the reward for that Davian collection. Yes? How much to get it back? 100,000. It'll bring twice that on the open market. Well, maybe, but you forget that we've already paid a very big claim. Fortunately for us, the collection was underinsured. But if we get everything back and sell it, we'll just about break even. Well, I'll put that deal to Selden, but I think he's going to want more money. He's lucky if he gets anything. I don't like doing business with thieves. He has no right to that money. Well, you'll get no argument from me on that. But if he has trouble raising the money, he might decide to destroy the collection, melt it down for the gold or something, and I wouldn't like that. A hundred thousand is my top price. He'll take it. You're a tough woman, Charlie. <laughs> I'm in a tough racket. There's one more thing. I want 10% of the resale price. Seven and a half. Ten. Make up your mind before it goes to 15. Mm, maybe it's your avarice that I find so terribly attractive. Ten. Good. 
I'll call you from Paris when I talk to him. You know, John, you really ought to marry me. We'd make a wonderful combination. Charlotte, you're the only woman I know who can make a proposal sound like a business merger. Is anything wrong with that? You got a computer for a heart. So? I can buy a computer. Not in a cabinet like this. I get the feeling I just lost an argument. Don't take any bad risks. Vincent Security. John Mannering just left my office. He's meeting Selden in Paris. Follow him. There's just a chance that you might get to the collection before him. Save us a whole lot of money. I'll be right behind him. <laughs> Russell, please. Charlotte Russell. Hello, Charlie. Uh, hold on a minute, will you? Yes? Can I borrow this, please? Charlie, you should know better. My commission just went up to 15%. Uh, John, John! Miss Russell, get me a seat on the night plane for Paris. get a lead on where Selden hid the collection? Only that it was in France. Selden hid it, and he's the only one who knows where it is. Well, after serving seven years, I think he's entitled to the money. He's entitled to nothing. It just so happens the insurance companies are willing to bend the law a little bit to get their money back. And you're the middleman in this deal? That's right. You know, I saw that Davian collection just once. It's got some of the most beautiful pieces I've ever seen. And they shouldn't be hidden in trunks and buried under floorboards. They should be out where people can see them and enjoy them. Selden knows how you feel. Is this why he trusts you? Who knows? How can you figure a thief? I don't think of him as a thief. More of a Raffles character. Gentleman crook. No. 
He's a tired, frightened old man, and this is his last job. He's got one chance to make his dough and get out. If he muffs it, he'll be on the bread line for the rest of his life. You rather hope he makes it too, don't you? I get 15% of the resale value. Oh, you're a real hard cookie, aren't you? There it is. Iris. <laughs> Jean Mannering, please contact the reception desk. Mr. Jean Mannering to reception. Thank you. John Mannering. Oh, yes, sir. Here's something for you. Merci. Is this it? This is it. 11 tonight. 8.30. That doesn't give us a lot of time. That doesn't give me a lot of time. I'm not coming. That's right. But you... Look, you work for me now. You'll stay at the hotel. Now, let's see if we can figure out exactly where this place is. Stuff's hidden here? No, not here. Well, you can't be sure. I'm sure. Little man up here says no. They won't go near the collection until Selden's made a deal with a buyer. And does your little man tell you why Selden's daughter's here? That's what we're here to find out. Get the car out of sight. We'll take it from here on foot. She's waiting for someone. Yes. Until now, it's been Selden and us. Now it looks like turning into a game for three people. I don't like that. This is a good chance to discourage the opposition. Selden? Sorry I'm late. The Baron. Selden's making his deal with the Baron. 
So? We can't take chances with an operator like him. This changes things. Move around that way. Wait for my move. Have you spoken to the insurance company? Yeah. How much? A hundred grand. No questions asked. It's rather less than we'd hoped for, but we're not really in a position to bargain. How do we... It's cash on delivery. You name the time and place. I'll speak to my father, and if he accepts your terms, I'll contact you. When? No later than noon tomorrow. We want to get this over as soon as we can. The longer it takes, the more chance the others have of catching up with us. You mean the police? Partly. The others who might be interested in the collection worry us more. Max Holder. You know about him. Well, the story is that your father double-crossed him. That's not true. He was supposed to be in on the job. He backed out at the last minute. If he hadn't, my father would never have been arrested. What was it? There's someone over there. Let's walk over to your car now. Just play it cool. When you get in your car, drive like you were at Indianapolis. Don't stop for anybody. That far, no further. You jumped in too fast, Holder. The collection's not in the open yet. I'm well aware of that, Mr. Mannering. Lucas! What are you going to do? Persuade your father to cancel his arrangements with Mr. Mannering and let me have the collection. He'll never do that. Oh, I think he will. When he finds out I've got you, I think he'll do just whatever I tell him. Hands up, Mannering. Leave it. You're out of your class, Mannering. Go back to London. Leave this to the pros. No! 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 That's enough, Lucas. Let's get her back to the house. What happened to you? I ran into some men with guns. We didn't quite see eye to eye. I was so worried when you didn't get back to the hotel. Hiya, Charlie. I figured you'd show up sooner or later. I came in last night. We introduced ourselves in the hotel. You'd be flattered if you knew how we sat around and worried about you. Charlotte brought over the money with her. A hundred thousand American dollars. I thought you might need them in a hurry. The only thing I need in a hurry is a gallon of black coffee. There's a cafe on the main road a couple of miles back. Lead the way. I'll drive with John. Have you seen Selden? He sent his daughter. A couple of hoods picked her up. If I don't do something fast, they'll use her to get Selden to turn over that collection. Well, what are you going to do? Right now, I'm going to get myself a cup of coffee. Oh, Miss Selden, I find it hard to believe that your father never confided in you the whereabouts of his treasure. He trusted no one. Not even his own daughter? No. He thought it was too dangerous for me to know. Yes, he always was a cautious man. Oddly enough, I believe you're telling the truth. Do you want me to make sure? No, 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 Lucas. You know how distasteful I find your sort of persuasion. 
Selden is a very valuable property. A loving father would give anything to get her back unharmed. Why can't you leave him alone? Hasn't he paid enough for this? Seven years of his life and he's still being hounded and hunted. <laughs> oh, why can't you leave him alone? <laughs> How very touching. But you forget one thing, Miss Selden. Your father is a thief. Not a saintly old gentleman seeking justice, but a thief. Are you any better? A little. I'm an uncaught thief. And contrary to public opinion, there is no honour amongst our profession. What are you going to do? First of all, send your father a small token to convince him that you're our guest. Yes, this will do very nicely. Then invite him to give us the collection in return for you. Lock her up in the other room. He'll never do it. He'll never do it. I know him. I know him. Leave him alone, please. Merci, madame. Au revoir. Bonjour. Maison Bleu Garage. Feeling better. Back in the human race. Yeah. Got the money? Yeah. Looks as though you're not going to get much chance of using it. Oh, I don't know. If Cordelia over there comes up with a lead, we're back in business. Cordelia? That's a pretty name. How long has she been your assistant? About 24 hours. Oh. Well, she was very concerned when you didn't come home last night. She fussed about like a mother hen. Is that right? I think I'm on to something. The Kaha firm remembers them. They gave a London address and said they were touring. What about those service station receipts? Well, that's it. It's located on a big tourist camping site about 20 kilometers from here. I talked with the patron. Yeah. A man and his daughter checked in about five days ago. The girl has been in since for petrol, but they haven't seen the man. He stays in the caravan all the time. That figures. I think maybe we've got him. <laughs> nice going. Yes. Yes. Well done, Cordelia. Hey, two lovely girls. Well, that's all I can handle. I've got a small car. <laughs> Merry cash. <laughs> Are you a deal? Mallory, well, how did you find me? That's not important. Did you just get this? Yeah, yeah by special delivery. Is it true? Has Holder got Anne? I'm afraid so. He must have followed her when she came to meet me. And that's it. He's won out. What about our deal? What, 100,000? That was a pipe dream. A seven-year-long pipe dream. You know, I worked it out once. I figured I was making over 14,000 a year just by sitting quietly in my cell, being a good con. <laughs> Big laugh. So you're going to throw all that away? Do you think Holder's giving me any choice? He's got my daughter, Mannering. I can't hold out against that. Listen, Selden, I don't understand you. The man has given you until 3 o'clock to make up your mind. Now, that's two whole hours from now. Plenty of time to try and get her back. No, I can't take a chance like that. You know what the man's like. He'd kill her. Look, he may kill her anyway. Listen, Selden, up until now, my only concern was to get that collection back. But now there's a human life involved. I want to use those two hours. I just wanted the money. I just wanted the but money to get the out money. of this. Do I get the time? All right. But if you don't have Anne back here by three, then I follow Holder's orders. All right. Now, what about this phone number? Do you know where that is? No, I'm not sure. It might be the Chateau Celestine. Holder used to use it in the old days. Cordelia, bring the car up, will you? Charlie, I want you to stay with him. Make sure he doesn't leave before three o'clock. OK. Be careful. Well, 
Well, as long as we're here together, perhaps I should introduce myself. I'm Charlotte Russell of Insurance International. Ironic, us being here together like this. If Mannering succeeds, it'll cost my company 100,000. You were pretty tough on Selden. I didn't enjoy it. I think you want him to get his money. Well, the insurance company authorized me to pay the reward. If I get the collection back, he gets his money. I gave him my word. For a hard-headed businessman, I think you've got quite a sense of honor. I don't let that get around. It could cost me money. <laughs> Miss Selden, we're having a little pre-celebration drink. Thought you might like to join us. He's agreed. Well, not yet, but he will. He will. Don't depend on it. Your father will do exactly as he's told. You see, I know the way his mind works. I've left him no loopholes, no way out. He'll do anything I say. Please. Now then, what shall we drink to? Uh, your freedom or our success? Hmm? get close without being seen. The time's getting short. Bring a car where you can see the house. When I come out, you be ready. Can't I come with you? Just have the car ready. Take a lot of discouraging, Mr. Mannering. Inside. That's not going to help. The waiting bothering you? I would have thought with your experience you'd be expert by now. What's the time? 20 to 3. Already? He's not going to make it. There's still time. Well, how do you see yourself, Mannering? As the knight in shining armor, rescuing the poor damsel in distress, huh? <laughs> you 
You haven't done a very good job of it, have you? Well, you can't win them all. What are we going to do with him? I'll keep them out of circulation until we get what we want. The seller should hold them. No, Manoring, mean, you stay where you are. You're the man with the gun. Yes, and just you remember that. And I'm sorry it turned out like this. Not your fault. Next time I go housebreaking, I'll uh, bring dog biscuits. All right, get them down to the cellar. <laughs> you back home. Ten to three. We've done it with time to spare. Dad! He's not here. But he said he would wait. Doesn't matter what he said. He's gone. something. Why did you ask the Baron to handle this for you? Instead of coming straight to the insurance company, you mean? Yeah. I couldn't risk that. I might have had the police sitting there waiting for me. No, you know the rules. No questions asked. You mean to tell me you wouldn't break the rules for a hundred thousand? I had to have somebody I could trust. Somebody to whom the Davin collection meant more than money. The Baron. Well, I'll say this for you. You certainly picked the right man. What's the time now? Uh... Quarter past three. Well, we're late. I should have phoned hold already. You're really going through with it. You're going to give the collection to him. They've got Anne. I'll do anything they tell me. You stop where I can telephone. Lucas, can you reach that broken bottle top there? That's it. That's it. Now. Put it in my hand. Now I'll hold it while you cut through. Right. Excuse me. Just a minute, Mademoiselle. Sausages, garlic, anchovies. Anchovies. This what you want? Ah, oh, merci. Mr. Seldom, any idea what time he left? Mr. Seldom. Mr. Seldom. Forget about this for the moment. I want to know about Mr. Seldom. A man must eat. For all I care, you can gorge yourself into a coma after you have answered my question. Question? What question, mademoiselle? Did you see Mr. Seldom leave? Mr. Seldom. Ah, <laughs> Monsieur Seldon. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, he's not here. He left about 20 minutes ago with a lady. Thank you. I don't know, I don't know. And listen to me, your father's gone to pick up the collection and I've got to get to him. Now think. I can't. He never told me where he'd hidden it. But you were with him when he got the mask, the one he sent to me. You must remember something. It was at night. He drove most of the way, and he left me in the car and went off. John. I've just talked with the man at the garage. Seldon left 20 minutes ago. I see. Charlotte was with him. I don't think there's anything to worry about. Well, that's exactly what's bothering me. If Charlotte can get that collection back without paying for it, she will. But she agreed. She brought the money over with her. You don't know Charlie like I do. You'll have to hold yourself together, and we can't find your father without you. Now, let's go over this thing again, step by step. Did you leave from here? Yes. And when you got to the main road, which way did you turn? Left. We turned left. Well, that's a start. We'll try that for openers. Come on. Won't be a minute.
Hello? Yeah, hold on a minute. It's Selden. Selden. Holden? Selden. What do I have to do? Hello, are you still there? Mm hmm. Is Anne all right? You haven't hurt her. No, no, Anne's fine and will be so long as you do exactly as I tell you. Now, where have you got the collection hidden? Mm hmm. Yes, yes, I know it. A small lane. Right, I'll see you there in half an hour. He doesn't know. He thinks we've still got her. <laughs> <laughs> au revoir, monsieur. Did you talk to him? Yeah. Did he say anything about the Baron? No, nothing. We'd better go then. Which way? Straight on. <laughs> Does this look familiar? No, it's all so different in the light. We'll keep going for a while. Wait! That turning back there, I think I think I recognize it. There's a bridge. Let's take a look. I know it is. You got that on the map? Yes, it leads to a village called Saint Justine. Is this the place? Yeah, over there. No, you stay here. It doesn't matter anymore. Until I get Anne back, it matters. Does this ring any bells? No. No, I don't remember it. What did you say about a train? Well, when I was waiting for my father in the car, I heard one. It must have been fairly near. Look at this, John. There's a railway track that crosses the road about five kilometers further on. Let's check it out. Sure, this is the place. That's what he said. Well, where the devil is he? How do I know? Well, find him. You know where we are now? There's a church and a house over on the left. Oh, and a quarry of some sort, a bit off the beaten track. Did you leave the highway? 
Yes. Yes, on quite a rough road. Which one's the nearest? The quarry, I think. All right, we'll try that. Where's Anne? Is that it? I want my daughter first. You old fool! It's mannering. Right behind us. Move it. Move it. Charlie written all over it. You all right? Yes, I'm all right. Let's just let me rest a minute. Seven years for nothing. It doesn't matter, Father. It's not important anymore. It's going, Charlie. John! I, uh, well, uh, I, I got it. Well, that's what we came here for. Yeah, it sort of uh, wraps everything up, doesn't it? Well, not quite. What about Selden and his money? Oh, forget about it. You can't forget about that. Your company made him a deal. Well, what do I care about that? I've got the stuff. 
Let him sue me for it. Oh, don't worry. You'll get your 15%. All I'm concerned about is saving my company a whole lot of money. Charlie, you're a very dishonest woman. Perhaps that's why I'm successful. Look, I don't want to stay here and argue with you. Let's talk about it when we get to London. Goodbye, John, and thanks for everything. Bye, Charlie. She's not the only dishonest woman around here. I know. I saw you. Well, let's go find Selden. How's she going to react when she finds the money gone? Well, let her sue us for it. Thank you.